Good afternoon, welcome, hello everyone, and a big welcome to our webinar today, be a standout manager, product manager in the AI world. My name is Daniel, I'm the head of enrollments here at Forthrev, and it gives me great pleasure to welcome you today um, as your host, but also uh, shortly to introduce you to an esteemed panel of experts that are going to provide their insights on today's exciting topic. As we navigate the rapidly evolving landscape of product management, it's crucial to stay ahead of the curve, especially with the growing influence of AI in our field. We will also um, have a number of assets available for you. So just a quick bit of housekeeping first. Um, please share where you're from in the, in the chat as, as uh, Sam, who's assisting us, uh, has, has requested. Um, we'd love to see where you're from and engage with you more deeply. This is also about you. Uh, toward the end, there'll be a, a, a large Q&A session that we will have your questions answered by our panel. So please use the Q&A function for your questions. If that's okay, there'll be assets dropped and your location, if you, if you care to, dropped in the chat function. But your questions of the panel, certainly in the Q&A, and we'll get through as many of them as we can. There is a large... Um, uh, registration pool and attendance pool. So thank you, firstly, it's great to see your interest. And secondly, we can't wait to get in to what is a very, very valuable topic for everyone. Um, today, we'll be covering a few key topics. Um, the current landscape of product management and emerging trends. Um, secondly, essential skills for future ready product managers. The impact of AI on PM roles strategies for standing out in your product management career, and finally, how the King's Product Management Career Accelerator can help you achieve your goals as well. Very much looking forward to getting into all of that. But I've spoken enough, uh, and we're very fortunate to have an ex expert panel joining us today. We'll be hearing valuable insights from our panelists throughout the webinar, and at the end, as I mentioned, we'll have that Q&A session where you can ask your burning questions. So let's dive in. Can I ask um, that everyone turn on their cameras and I might start uh, with Gerald, if it's okay, I'll go from my top left. If you could introduce, welcome Gerald, if you could introduce yourself at a quick quick overview. For sure. So hi everyone, if you can hear me okay. Sounds good. So I'm a product guy, finance background. I had a privilege of being group CPO for a branded online chess business and a product president for a global education market lead, uh, global education market leader. So my ad, my expertise is video games and ad tech, and I've seen many trends, but I believe AI to be a true game changer for us product managers. It's good to be here. Thank you for having me, DC. My absolute pleasure, GT, and it, great use of emojis, everyone. Keep that up throughout the whole session that would be awesome lizzie ladies next and it gives me great pleasure to welcome you and see you again i haven't seen you for a while so thank you ever so kindly for your time hi um i have a background in ed tech but came into it as a learning designer and then moved into a product owner role first at fourth rev and then now with the uh, alan and jill gray philanthropy so i work mainly um on an online high school challenge, let's call it, with learners in East Africa, in Rwanda, Kenya, and Ethiopia, and then also in Southern Africa. And we're primarily an entrepreneur supporting organization. Well, I can't wait to hear more. Um, and thank you. Alex, um, welcome to your good self as well. And thank you ever so kindly for your time. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's uh, fantastic to be able to have a conversation on what will be probably the biggest event in our professional lifetime. Uh, AI is fundamentally changing the landscape here, everywhere. I'm calling in today from sunny Australia, although it's dark and 9pm here. So uh, I'm really looking forward to this discussion. And uh, for anyone that hasn't seen the masterclasses, uh, you can definitely get a few technical tidbits from me tonight. Looking forward to that, Alex. And may I be self-indulgent, South Australia or... Uh, I'm up in sunny Queensland, uh, Brisbane, we're... Australia, the host of the 2032 Olympic Games. We can't wait. I'm in Melbourne. Mm. Um, Tom, last but not least, thank you ever so kindly for your time as well. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, great to be here. Uh, I'm calling to you from the UK in Banbury where it's dark at noon, so 
guess uh, we've got that in common there, Alex. Um, look, as it says on the screen, I'm Chief Product Officer. My background originally was in health services, and I made the switch into product about 10 years ago. So I'm very much a digital health, health tech uh, specialist product person, um, really interested in the role of AI in a regulated space, obviously, as we all know, healthcare is. And the other part of my bio here is, as you'll see, is I've taught on the Career Accelerator for over a year and a half now. So um, I've had three cohorts come through. So uh, really enjoy that side of my work as well. And yeah, thanks for having me here today, DC. My our absolute pleasure. And thank you for the work that you do in supporting our learners achieve their intended career outcomes. That's what it's all about. Um, I'll move to the next slide now. And let's, I guess, start by looking at the current landscape of product management, the demand for skilled Product managers has skyrocketed in recent years, according to LinkedIn jobs data. Postings for PMs have grown by an impressive 32% annually over the past five years. And even more striking, in the UK alone, we saw a 140% increase in demand for product managers just a few years ago. As the annual growth statistics demonstrated, it has been consistent with significant spikes. Also, this surge demand presents an incredible opportunity for both current PMs, product managers, looking to advance their careers and professionals considering a transition into this exciting field. Um, I find that fascinating and we're going to dive into the demand a little bit more as well. Um, but I might get to the panel questions as quick as I can because that's what it's all about. Um, evolving expectations. So it's not just about the number of jobs available. The role itself as a PM is rapidly evolving. We see a shift from purely technical product management to more strategic leadership oriented positions. Companies are now looking for PMs who can drive data informed decision making is critical. Integrate cutting, tech, cutting edge technologies such as AI into products and processes. Balance technical expertise with strong soft skills. And that's a key takeaway today as well as the AI inclusion. And lead cross-functional teams effectively. I guess a question to the panel, my first. What changes have you observed in the skills and qualifications you're looking for in product managers over the last few years, if anyone would like to nominate an answer to that question first. I might start, actually, I might start with Alex, if that's okay, for that particular yeah. question. I'll actually go this one step further. I'll talk about what I've seen over the last couple of years and then talk about what I predict to happen into the, into the future. And really what I have been seeing is that in the post-COVID world, we went from in the office, physical, uh, interactions to this highly remote, um, digital first kind of approach. And uh, as such, we saw this huge demand for people to have to manage these additional products that were coming online. And, and essentially, companies were being forced to bring their products into the web uh, because they just didn't have a choice. COVID was a big catalyst for change. But AI is almost uh, bigger, if, if, if not uh, materially bigger by an order, a 10x order to the magnet. Or at, orders magnitude larger. And the reason for that is because we're going to see uh, software being created infinitely faster. Um, AI is just going to be able to produce new products. It's going to be able to create new things. Uh, but the, the problem is still going to remain. And I think this is where we're going to see huge demand for product managers into the future is when we have this commoditized software market where AI can just build apps uh, willy nilly, we're going to need an entire suite of people, uh, product managers, to be able to make sure that those products are actually delivering on the value propositions that they're needed for their end users. Uh, and when we get to a commo purely commoditized software space where software is near um, near zero cost to produce, uh, the management, maintenance, and making sure that those products aren't just vaporware and just mess uh, is actually going to be a real skill set. So I think that we're going to see this massive, massive explosion in demand for product managers and people uh, tasked with the accountability of making sure that the things that are built are actually meant to be built, not just because we could. Great points, actually. Anyone else would like to add to that or shall I move on quickly? Yeah, I'll add the a point there. So I, I like what Alex said. I, I also try to look at what in the future PM is going to look like. And I've seen a trend where some PMs are actually taking on more secondary type skills. So for example, PM with data, PM with UX, PM with tech, all of which are useful. We always say that PM is like the intersection of all the different departments. But I would say like if you actually have a minor spe specialization on one of these, it would really help you because I think we're coming to a fast moving world where 
it's it's important to know your base skill, but it's actually really good to have as many, I guess, secondary skills as you can. PM with psychology, as someone wrote there. Back to you, DC. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a great segue, actually, into exactly what the next slide that I'd like to invite uh, Lizzie and, and Tom to um, to contribute to as well, because GT, what you just said is exactly this. As you can see from this matrix on the technical side, we have those examples um, that GT just gave, that data analytics and data-driven decision-making, AI integration, proficiency in product management tools and methodologies, and user behavior analysis. On the soft skill side, um, we have that leadership and team management, the communication and stakeholder management, and that strategic thinking and vision, um, along with adaptability and continuous learning. The challenge for many companies, as we've discovered, and our candidates do, is finding candidates who excel in both. Many programs focus on one, but don't integrate potentially both. So it's a combination that truly sets out out, sets apart uh, outstanding product managers. Um, Lizzie and, and Tom, I guess, in terms of those soft skills in your roles as well um, and the technical, how much more emphasis today do you see employees needing and seeking the balance between the two? Go. Would you like me to go first? Tom's off mute first. <laughs> okay, I'll, uh, I'll go. Yeah, I think the look, there was there was a recent shift by Airbnb to to move product marketing manager back to the fore, and that that focus on the the ability, as I I would say, and I do say when, when teaching on the course, that to see all sides of value, so not just to focus on the the technical feasibility, as as uh, Alex and Gerald have mentioned there. I, the, the, can we do it? Well, the answer is going to be yes, we can. Should we do it? Who's it for? Who's buying it? Why are they buying it? And for how long? Start to become the key questions then. And the technical skills will still be needed in that. So it's not that we're saying, okay, look, they're, they're gone forever because then it becomes about choice of tool and life cycle and life cycle management rather than just a, what's going to solve my problem today is what's going to build a sustainable business for tomorrow. So I think all of these soft skills become important. And I think, ICPM role becoming even more business facing uh, over the next, you know, two to five years. Completely agree. Lizzie, anything to add there as well? Yeah, look, I think it's also from my experience too, it depends the organization you're going into and how they set up that role. So it can look very different depending on where you're working, to be completely honest. So where I'm working now, yes, technically the title is product owner, but we don't have a product manager. So guess who takes that on as well, right? Yeah, me. So I think, um, and they were very aware when they were hiring, they could go two different paths. They could go someone with sort of a, let's say software technical background and someone who, who didn't have that, which again, that's me. Um, and uh, there were pros and cons in their mind to each and they went with the non-technical background for the reasons that Tom spoke about, but also what you see on the slide. And over and over again, throughout that interview process, it was very much like, we need someone who can seize the vision and brings people along with them. That's key. Because if you can't bring those other teams and people along, um, it, that's it. I mean, it, it just won't work. So yeah, just to, agreeing with what Tom said. Absolutely. And we see that more and more. It's excellent. Just a reminder for everyone um, to pop your questions in the Q&A as some are doing. And um, we'll get to them either during if it relates to the slide that we're on or post. And the first question um, does relate to emerging technical skills. Um, so if we dive a little deeper into those, the ability to work with data is becoming increasingly crucial. This doesn't mean that you need to be a data scientist as a PM by any stretch of the imagination, but have capacity or, or benefit in becoming comfortable with analyzing user data to inform product decisions, using AI powered tools for market research and competitor analysis, and potentially even understanding the basics of machine learning to collaborate with effective data teams of many whom you are managing. And I think that's the, the key there is also understanding the different stakeholders that you do manage and the different traits, quirks, personalities that come with the different either technical or even marketing roles that you may be overseeing on a product lifecycle as well. 
onto the core soft skills on the next slide. Um, in many ways, these are what separate good product managers from great ones similar to what has been shared. Leadership, you need to be able to inspire that cross-functional team without necessarily having a direct authority over their day-to-day skill set or work. Communication, clear persuasive communication is essential for a, an effective PM, whether you're explaining technical concepts to non-technical stakeholders or translating that from one team to another is often the way, or pitching your product vision to executives or customers. Adaptability in our first fast-paced industry, the ability to pivot quickly and learn new skills is invaluable, as is emotional intelligence, understanding and managing your own emotions, as well as those of your team members can make a huge difference as well. Um, anything to add on the on the critical skills of both the technical or the critical soft skills that employers are so um, in need of today before I move on? I'll just add one. I'll just say that curiosity is actually really important just to learn Love more that. about your customer, but also learn more about what's available, what are the tools, try it, test it, challenge it. And I think you just have to have this natural ability to like just be inquisitive. So I'll, I'll add it to the list, EC. I love that. That's pertinent. Fantastic. Yeah, I, I might I might actually jump in and add uh, just a couple items here. The first of which is I, I, I think people are really underestimating how powerful AI is going to be to enable us as product managers to be able to understand code, to be able to perform these data tools and, and, and analysis. And in a world where AI kind of levels that playing field and these technical skills are no longer really that technical, um, I think we're actually going to see people coming from different parts of the world, different areas of life, different industries, different verticals. If you worked hospitality or if you worked in finance or if you worked in law, um, you bring that knowledge and you bring that unique insight to the table. And I think that that's really going to be one of those things that people that have kind of done something before and then are coming into product management uh, are really going to be um, that kind of that differentiator or that difference maker, uh, especially if they are able to bring those soft skills along with them. Because I think in an age of AI, the technical is really not the problem anymore. Uh, yes. It's never going to be the problem. It's going to be how well can you capture that person's uh, kind of problem, identify that value. How can you drive that communication internally, externally? How can you make sure it's clear, it's crisp, it's concise, and it just carries? Uh, the worst thing you can do as a product manager, in my opinion, is uh, is is have a message that is corrupted by the time it gets to like the second or third person. If you if you can't communicate with such clarity that you get two three links down the chain and it just is a different mess then then yeah, you're already you're already uh you're already you're already failing so i think uh those soft skills is where every one of us me included need to be investing a lot of our time and effort you make a great point and for the audience's benefit and our benefit is to knowing our audience if i could ask that if people could type in the chat function if they are um, looking to start a career in product management, as in commence your career, change your existing career into product. So commence, change, or advance your existing career in product management. It will help us also understand our demographic and, and frame some of how we we, um, we position today's discussion. But also in the product management career accelerator, the, the vast majority, when I say the vast majority, it, it differs between 60 and 70% of any presentation are looking to change. And I would dare say that that's a fair bit of the audience along with advances. Um, part of the benefit is also understanding your highly valuable transferable skills. And through the career coaching that I'll touch on a bit later, that really is enabled to shine along with your new skills as well. Just before I move on to the next slide, I will ask question one from the audience. Is it helpful for product managers to learn, and this might be for Tom actually, is it helpful for product managers to learn technical skills like SQL, Python, and Tableau? I mean, you touched on it there, Alex, with AI taking some of that up as we move forward. But uh, does it help to have those technical skills, do, do we feel? Uh, that, similar to, to what Lizzie said a moment ago, context matters a lot for this question. I think it's hard to advise anyone in a vacuum, yes, you should go and learn this because you would never mm -hmm. stop doing courses. As a 
general piece, data is always valuable and something that organizations tend not to do that well. So if you are looking to kind of place a bet, if you like, it's not a bad area, particularly if you're so inclined towards data and it's something you enjoy and you're interested in, well, why not? Having said all that, I think you need to be quite careful with over committing down a route. You should probably learn a little bit more about it and think about what sorts of roles. There's another question in the chat about the difference between enterprise and startup PMs, and that probably helps you to start answer what kind of profile do you need, i.e. being deeper on a particular skill in a bigger place is, is more common versus startups where you wear many hats and it's much more generalist. Excellent. Excellent. I completely understand and agree. And I'm going to move on to AI and product management. Artificial intelligence isn't just a feature we're adding to products at all. It's a revolution of the way we work as product managers. As we can see from this chart, AI is impacting various aspects of product management. Data analysis, we just touched on, AI can process vast, vast amounts of data quickly, uncovering insights that may be missed by human analysis alone. Customer insights, AI-powered tools can analyze user behavior and feedback at scale, helping us understand our customers better. Personalization, which I'm a huge advocate for in all aspects, uh, AI enables hyper-personalization User personalized user experience is a key differentiator in many products. Task automation, routine tasks like data collection and reporting can be automated, freeing up time for more strategic work and decision-making. AI can provide data-driven recommendations to support decision-making processes. It's important to note that AI isn't replacing product managers as we've touched on already. It's augmenting our capabilities, allowing us to work smarter and focus on high value activities as well just a caveat on that before i ask if anyone wants to contribute um to that slide i'm by far assuming and the most i won't say elderly i'll say mature member of the panel and i do recall back in my time the introduction of things like microsoft office and people freaking out that it was excel was going to kill accountants was was, was the terminology used at the time. I see similarities and big differences as well, but um, we can see the value certainly of, of AI in product management, especially around those insights, data-driven decision-making and the like. Anyone like to contribute to that slide before I move on to an example of ethical considerations? Yeah, I'm more than happy to, to talk to this one because I this is something I'm very I have a firm, passionate belief about, and especially in the context of product management, and that's personalization. And yes. with the rise of AI, and we see this incredible capability for AI to do a huge amount of the technical execution and reduce timeframes and reduce delivery cycles and allow us to iterate on our ideas a lot faster. It's actually going to, in my opinion, create this really interesting prospect in the future where product managers who are making these decisions about what goes into products because they're going after the value proposition, they'll be able to come up with their own flavor. They will be able to come up their own personal style and their own personal preferences will start coming through in the product. Uh, and as such, we'll get to a place and I, I genuinely hope this happens and I'm, I'm going to work for it, but I think we're going to get to a place where um, we're going to be able to talk about certain product managers who make these incredible hyper hyper contentious choices about what they put into their products and why they put them into products. And it's deep, the products they create are deeply personalized. Uh, most of us have know these, these tech titans of the world, the Johnny Ives in the design, the Steve Jobs in the entrepreneurship. There are all of these names of people that had really strong opinions and really firm beliefs. Uh, and all of that came through in their work. Uh, I'm really looking forward to the age where AI is going to enable everyone who has opinions around how their product should really go and what kind of the difference uh, they they will put their own personal spin on and how that comes through in the product. So I think AI is going to enable this, this age of the product manager really coming through into the products we manage. Which is exciting. Um, and it's, Whilst we consider it still in its infancy, I spoke to someone the other day that did their master's in artificial intelligence 20 years ago. Um, and someone also much wiser than I mentioned to me, this is probably going back five years, um, the speed at which the world is, or the technology is changing, 
has never been this fast, yet it will never be this slow again. So what you're saying there is mm. whilst we're embracing this and excited for it, it's going to change rapidly as well. To harness that as a PM is going to put you ahead of the field as well. Um, before I move on, any other contribution to that? Yeah, I'll just say, I'll just um, reiterate what Alex said by saying it in a different way, and that is uh, Satyam, the CEO of uh, Microsoft, he actually did say that AI augments the human and it allows us to be more creative. So to Alex's point, I'm also looking forward. There's so many things that I can't even, haven't even figured out, and I'm sure someone out there will have all this democratized technology with them, and it's what the human mind can think of. And I'm really looking forward to that because now with all these AI agents coming in, you can actually go very fast, very quickly. And this is a truly amazing time to be a PM. Even if you're just starting out, there's just so much we can do because it's such an early age. Mm, exactly. Um, thank you. Moving on to ethical considerations. With great power comes great responsibility. As we integrate AI into products and processes, we need to be mindful of ethical considerations, especially surrounding data privacy. How are we collecting and using customer data? And in a global sense, with cross-border regulations and things like that, that becomes even more um, profound and compounded and, and challenging. Algorithmic bias, are our AI models fair and unbiased, which is always a challenge. Transparency, how can we explain how our AI-driven features make decisions? As product managers, we play a crucial role in that our products are not only innovative, but also ethical and responsible. Um, I guess for the panel, how has AI changed the way product managers work and are there ethical challenges that you see PMs needing to address? I might ask Lizzie, but I'm sure there's others willing to contribute to this too. So the, the main product I work on is called Wabunguzi, which means dis discover or explore in Swahili because we're mainly working in East Africa. So this is an online gamified challenge for high school students. So already you can imagine the legal documentation and framework we have to, to put this out to high school students. Um, and we have, obviously, we're in ed tech, so of course we're talking about AI. Um, and the question is, because everybody wants to incorporate it, and the question is, how do we do it? Um, and how do we do it safely? And it's something, you know, we have, we, we have a chatbot. And we've had issues, obviously, with that chatbot, as, as you can imagine, when you unleash, when you first unleash it with high school students, high school students, wherever they are, are going to be high school students. Um, so for us, it has been a bit slower to incorporate it into our product because we take this quite seriously, as do our stakeholders, like the Rwandan Education Board and the Ministry of Health in Kenya. So we can't um, play fast and loose with this, if I can say. Um, but we are uh, working on bringing in um, an AI model to help give students feedback on their submissions. Because when we have 50, 70,000 students on a platform, trying to run that manually is, is, is pretty impossible. So that's what we're working on. But um, if I'm going to be very honest, it's, it's slow. It's slow going for us because of these kind of the legal and ethical frameworks um, we're, we're dealing with. And cross-border... Laws. Yes, and we're expanding into Ethiopia next year. So add that into it. So it's it's quite yeah. a lot. Um, so it is really exciting. So to echo what Gerald and Alex are saying, it's extremely exciting. But also for us, the reality of doing it, um, uh, it, it does tend to, to slow down the process a bit for us. I can imagine as well. And, and rightly so, because to get it wrong will take a lot longer to undo and fix and, and apologize and remedy. Um, than doing it right from the first place. Any other contributions? Yes, pl please, Alex. Yeah, I'd love to add to this one. Uh, this is a, a bit of a personal one for me. My my dad was diagnosed with motor neuron disease last year. And about four weeks ago, he lost the ability to speak. Uh, so his, his muscles don't work anymore. Uh, fortunately enough, I had a half hour recording of us having a conversation, which I cleaned up and I used to clone his voice. Uh, and I built a little app so that he can now talk in his own voice and talk back to us. Uh, I'm building it so it's a complete feedback loop so he can listen to me, transcribes, and it offers him suggestions. But when it comes to ethics, 
um, there was two main considerations I had to factor in personally. Well, first is I've just cloned my father's voice and digitized it. If someone else gets access to this, they can mimic and imitate and become him because this is his primary means of communication. Uh, and these are the kind of ethical considerations that we didn't have to think about a year ago or two years ago. Um, deep fake technology in AI and this voice cloning, which I did it in four hours it took me to build this. Uh, if it takes me four hours to do this, uh, the, 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 the actual impact of a bad product decision, not having a validation check or not having an identity check or not really thinking through what is a bad actor going to do here um, has massive ramifications and some of which we, we won't see for a few years. Uh, as GT has said, and as DC said, we're still in the early days of AI. So as product managers, we need to have that heat seeking missile kind of head scanning the horizon saying, where is this tech going? Not where is it today? Where is it going? And what are the decisions I'm making today that could potentially become an ethical or a moral quandary down the line? Uh, this entire industry, AI in general, has been described by many people as the open source Manhattan Project because it has the power to destroy us, destroy our civilizations, but it also has the power to solve all of our world's problems. So it's this knife edge. Uh, so when we are, uh, especially me, and, and I advocate that anyone looking to advance or change into product management, when you are thinking through and making these, these decisions, um, the ethical considerations aren't as black and white anymore. They are really quite murky and really quite um, difficult to navigate. Uh, and the challenge is that nine times out of 10, you're not going to see them until you're right up in front of that decision. So it is, it's one of those things that you just have to constantly be on your toes for. So true. And that's such an impressive um, story you, you told. I hope you're appreciating every moment with your father as well. Um, and that he's understanding the value that you've created in that time together with your product there. Amazing you did it in such a short space of time. That, that blows me away. Um, just before I ask if anyone's got anything else to add to this important topic, when designing the Career Accelerator in true collaboration with both Kings and industry, one of the non-negotiables that industry had was the, ro the role of a responsible product manager, including the role of product manager ensuring accessible and representative products, ethical product management practices, and being a responsible global digital citizen. For, as you correctly pointed out, Alex, for people to obtain those skills, have an understanding of them, but to also project that in, be it applications or interviews, is a standout. Employees need exactly that. Um, it's so important. Um, not just the time, but we've got time. Anyone else on ethical yeah. consideration? Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna jump in here. Yeah, great story, Alex, there from what you've managed to do for your father. And I think there is also the other side of this argument, particularly in, in healthcare AI, which as you've heard from my background is very close to my heart, is the ethical considerations of not using AI in the loop. Because we in healthcare, we like to over-regulate. And even we've already got a difference between how the FDA views things in the US and how Europe is being left behind. Obviously, now you get an insight into the kind of LinkedIn content that I consume. But this, this is the point here is at an individual level there, Alex, you've done something amazing to improve quality of life. The system will take a long time to catch up with that. And a lot of this conversation, quite rightly, is about bad actors. What happens if it goes wrong? But also your role as a product manager here is to see all sides. And I think that's a crucial interview and general behavior tip I would give. See all sides of the argument, see all sides of the debate and ask the question of, but what about if it goes really right? What about if we get this right? And particularly in health tech and why I do what I do is the the prize is is huge change for people because the current healthcare system cannot cope. AI offers a life draft for something that's sinking the world over. Wait times are getting longer. Clinicians are burning out. Um, you know, the UK, we have the problem. They keep going across to see what Queensland's like. We have less and less doctors. It's, it's a problem that can't be solved by doing the same stuff over and over. So I would encourage everyone here to, to also think about the other side of this of, yes, there are huge risks. Yes, it has to be done properly. We must consider 
accessibility, security, fair use, and all of those things. But also we must consider that if we don't innovate, then we're really, you know, are we behaving ethically then? And and yeah. I'm gonna just I'm gonna yeah. sorry, I'll just tack on to what Tom's saying here because I think he's he's so bang on the point that as product managers, it comes back to that communication. We can see the value for that end user. And for me personally, with my story with dad, I got married son on Sunday and his speech was delivered with his AI voice at my wedding. Uh, and everyone in the room was in tears. Now that is just a big personal one for me. But if as a product manager, you're not willing to go out and advocate for those kind of outcomes because you are going to have half of the business and the lawyers and everyone else in the business saying, oh, what? but what if this bad stuff happens? As product managers, sometimes you're going to have to fly in the face of that and bring back that communication and have that real focus on here's where the value is and here's how we solve these problems. And that's, I think, where the challenge is going to be for product managers in the 21st century. And, and Tom, I love what you just said. I think it's exactly uh, where where product managers need to be. Couldn't agree more. A few things to, to add. The speed at which that can or one can influence that outcome in, in Tom's example there um, can save lives. Is there anything more powerful than that? Sure, we need to weigh up risk and, and be responsible at all times, consider, but sometimes we need to kick down some doors. Um, I love what you've added there. Now, Alex, we do feel privileged that you're sharing such valuable insights around your experience there, especially with your father, but also I'm quite honoured to be sharing your honeymoon with with everyone too. Um, I, I'm amazed that you're a part of the panel at such an important time of your life in so many ways and genuinely do appreciate it. Thank you ever so kindly. Um, I'll move on, actually, to career advancement strategies. Already we have heard from our esteemed panel such amazing insights that I think for people taking notes, for people that are going to watch this recording, um, there's some genuine nuggets and there, hopefully there's some more, more to come. This is very, very valuable for, looking, for those looking to change, advance or commence their careers. But... Um, but uh, sorry, standing out or transitioning into product managers, ma management roles um, and career advancement strategies to stand out in the competitive field that it is becoming as well requires a strategic effort. Um, here are some key strategies on here. Continuous learning. Um, we've touched on that somewhat already with some of the latest trends, technologies and methodologies. Um, courses, conferences, participating in webinars like this one. What could what could assist you more than receiving the insights from some of these experts? Building a strong network we're always advocates of with other PMs, attend industry events, engage in online communities. Your network will be a valuable source of knowledge, opportunities and support. Develop a personal brand. I might touch, I might ask someone to elaborate on this because it is important, but there are ways in which to do it. Seek diverse experiences and embrace data and AI. Um, as we've discussed, proficiency in those areas is going to set you apart. Um, for those on the panel, especially for those building teams, employing PMs or or, or teaching as, as well, as many of you are, how do you feel that we can also assist the audience in their advancement or change strategies into PM along, along those lines? I'll start because I, I, I work with different companies today and I... Uh... Hiring PMs is actually one of the, the job remit. So for those of you who are, let's start with those who are changing right into PM roles. Uh, I think this is a really exciting time. There is a few fundamentals that you probably need to be a really like adapted. And I think the, 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 the courses that for prep and Kings do is really, really good. I will just say, just to summarize, understand the problem at hand, have a framework of figuring out what needs to be done and then looking at how solutions have been done before. And so I'll just say like at, at a nutshell, right? That's kind of what you want to do. And of course, what DC has been saying is about building uh, the story, stakeholder management and having a narrative. For those who are advancing, uh, this is where I would say leveraging what AI can do. And I'm not expecting everyone to be experts here. None of us are, right? But the idea is that you break it into two phases. Phase one is just have baby steps 
baby steps include being hands-on. So definitely do something there, read up about it. Uh, our master classes actually talk a bit about it. So you can go in and have a look. And then of course, once you start practicing, you are your own niche because you are your own thought leader in your own space. Your work with your AI, only you know best, right? So if you can articulate that, start sharing best practices and start sharing failures, I think you're on your way. So I would just encapsulate by saying that this is a very exciting moment. And actually, there is a lot you can be doing right now. And it's not difficult. Back to you, DC. Wonderful. I might jump and, and include other responses into the next slide as well, considering those transitioning, as you mentioned, into, into PM roles. It's important to recognize that many skills from other roles are transferable. Project managers often excel at the coordination and timeline management. Marketers being valuable in skills in user research and positioning. And engineers have a deep understanding of the development and technical process. Um, are there things for the panel, this question, um, are there things that you feel also that makes a candidate stand out to you in a hiring process? Is it the things that we've discussed that set them apart with uh, advances in AIs and a portfolio or, or things like that? along those lines. Um, Lizzie, especially with, with your recent role change, I guess, as well, are they the sorts of things that your environment are, were looking for and do so now? I think it actually aligns with what Gerald was saying. I mean, a lot of it is, it comes down to what I found was people really wanted to get a sense of how you think, um, how you approach a question, how you approach a problem, because that tells them a lot more than the 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 what's on the CV. Um, and I think that that was really it. And so both in interviews, but also uh, the the uh, assignment tasks, if I can say that are ubiquitous these days, right? You will be doing something um, for for someone during the hiring process. Um, and you also use that as an opportunity to see what, what is this task? What do I think it's asking me to do? What do I think they're trying to see? And I was able also in that in during that period to also say, actually, this is based on the task alone. This is this is maybe not for me. Um, and, and that was also quite important. Um, but really, it is I, I, what I think is people are really, how do you think? How do you approach a problem? Um, and I think that is something that's that's key in, 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 a, in a product role period. Yeah, I might I might jump in. Yeah, yes. and uh, I'm gonna just kind of talk to the there is a a thing that's gonna happen in the next two to three years where we're gonna see AI just get to this absolutely astronomically capable level of sophistication, and when it does, uh, it's gonna open all of these doors for product managers and people who can identify value, identify niche, identify what it takes to bring a new product to market. Uh, and it's going to present this incredible opportunity for there to be, I, I personally believe a huge number uh, more product managers into the, into the future. So when, when I'm, when I'm, cause we, we've been recently hiring for a, a PM and, and working with some PMs, I'm looking for the intangibles and it's the, how well do you weave in the aspects of your life and how well do you make it very clear that the way you look at the world and the way that you view problems is through this kind of like value lens and how are you, how are you actually uh, solving these problems and, and really critically analyzing what are the key core components that make up the problem and, and that, and that customer understand, understanding. But I think, Everyone and I, and the other panelists have already said this. When you have your own skill sets, uh, I, I genuinely I can't stress enough that I feel that we're going to get to a place where the gut check, the gut feel, the gut intuition is going to be a major differentiator. So people that are willing to kind of lean in to that. Okay, I've got a little bit of experience in this space. I just my data is saying one thing, and I'm just gut feels is it's going this way. Uh, because we're going to get to a place where the AI might just say the same thing for everyone um, right. and in some respects. And I am painting with a very, very broad brush here. Uh, but exactly. I think um, I was looking over the course course outline 
uh, before before the, the catch up and the thing that stood out for me about the career accelerator program and I feel this like this sounds like a plug it's not meant to be it's just something I, I thought was really topical on this is course three is the launching a product to market as an entrepreneur and a salesperson and an engineer and a somewhat questionable PM myself I, I cannot overstate how valuable it is to have someone in that PM role who knows how to bring a product to market, knows really genuinely how to find out and design a solution that solves a customer problem. People like me with entrepreneurial backgrounds, we can do the rest. But genuinely, and this is why we're hiring right now, is we need that person to just focus in on that. And this is where I think there's going to be so much opportunity with AI, creating all of these new new incredible technological advances that we can create new products and new markets. Just, it's going to be incredible how much opportunity there is out there. It, But it's going to come back to those fundamental skills of how well are you able to really identify those problems? How well can you communicate it? And how well can you help drive that product to market? Absolutely. That resonates with me on so many levels. And I'm going to give a brief overview of the program shortly. We do need to get to a couple of questions for the audience benefit I'm, I'm happy to stick around and uh, answer more um course related questions uh even for five or ten minutes after the we run out of time which we're fast doing but um Vinay has got a question here thank you Vinay how does the scope of a PM role vary from startup SME to big corporate setup I might ask GT that one if that's okay yeah it's a really good question so I think someone mentioned this earlier in a call startup wear many hats, be very accountable, and you have to really drive something from start to finish. Uh, I'll go to the other extreme in a big company. You're probably quite um, siloed into one area, but you are the, the lead of that area. So for example, if you're on Facebook or Meta and your retention of this specific product, your only goal is to really drive that to its best, right? SMEs is somewhere in between. Uh, as Liz said earlier, it could be a bit of product ownership, a bit of product management, a bit of talking to customers. It could be anything in between, but it's really down to you driving results at a broad level or at a very focused level. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Um, getting to the next one as well. Uh, Katrina's asked, based on the collective experience of the panel, I guess, what skills or tools, in your opinion, differentiate an AI product manager from a regular product manager? Thank you. Interesting question. Um, could be argued uh, across digital and physical in that sense, in terms of product, but would anyone like to give an answer to that one? I'm, I'm happy to, to have a go, DC. I don't yet see people really approaching job searches as, as such a branded product manager, but I do think the ability to understand what AI can do in the context of a problem solving space is important. I think, and this doesn't just apply to product managers, people who just go AI is the answer to everything is, is frankly, and I'm not suggesting this is what the questioner is saying, but it's frankly lazy thinking and will come across as, as such. And so I think when you're approaching those sort of situations, it's about, and apologies to my other panelists, I can't remember who said it, but it's, in a slightly different way, having your model of product, what's your framework? I think it might have been you talking there, Lizzie, about how do you approach the problem? And the AI should be baked into that to show where you can drive efficiencies, but also where you can bring in innovation to a company. And more is the better if you do have a, a tangible example, as, as Alex has kindly shared today as well. So I, I wouldn't be so, to the questioner and to the group, I wouldn't be so binary about it. I would accept that AI is here that it can be a, a real force for good. And as we discussed, maybe, a, you know, there are considerations there around it most certainly as well. But it, in terms of approaching jobs and standing out in the market and thinking it through, it's more about your how you're approaching and driving business value is probably the question to position behind. Excellent response to that one. Uh, getting through a couple more, Lucas, I'm coming to yours in a moment when I give an overview of the program Lucas has asked about a postgraduate certificate component. Someone's asked here, can you give examples of how AI has made things quicker with building products in your industries? Quicker coding, analyzing customer data more, um, more quickly. Any quick examples? <laughs> um, I'll AI this answer. Um, but anyway, any quick example, quick examples for the audience around how you're using AI already? 
I mean, I think if you if you listen to what I was uh, talking to a little earlier with my product with dad, that whole thing from start to finish took me less than 12 hours to build. And it wasn't because I'm an amazing developer. It's because I know how to tell the AI how to build things. Uh, and this is a perfect example of how uh, in the technical context, it was able to achieve these incredible things. Uh, but I, my, my primary startup is an AI product scoping tool. And this is another great example of where you can take a kernel of an idea and expand it into this very detailed, deeply, deeply specific uh, scope document in just a few kind of steps that normally would take weeks. So I think AI is just speeding up tasks, individual tasks, which when chained together form up a role or a, or a key objective, object um, uh, thing that we do. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think there is, you can look at any, any part of the technology stack, um, be it from customer research all the way to deployment, uh, of the, of the code at the infrastructure layer level and AI is fundamentally shifting how fast thing gets done the whole way through. Absolutely. Any tools specifically? Um, Greg has asked actually, which application should use... be on the radar for, to incorporate and learn potentially? I'm going to throw it to everyone else after me, but I, I personally use a product I built, gosecope.ai. I also use cursor.dev. Uh, sorry, cursor.sh uh, for for code analysis. I do use Chat GPT with the the new model for a lot of thinking. Uh, but then I I personally use some open source models running locally on my PC down here. So I'm a bit of a probably a bit of a nerd. So don't don't take what I do as a base model. I'll say for everyone starting out or everyone who's not who considers themselves a beginner, uh, even me to be honest, I would say. ChatGPT is a very good tool to use, but they have its limitations. So I would also use Copilot, which is Microsoft's version of ChatGPT. I would use Gemini. And sometimes you see I have many tabs and I have actually all multiple tabs of these happening at the same time. I would ask them the same questions. And then because, because Microsoft and Gemini, they search the web. So they actually give you links and you can actually go read about it yourself. So then I take a step back and I, I just kind of piece together all the information. So I would just say, don't, don't, Alex is an expert <laughs> and he's, he's amazing and I would love to just sit down with him for half an hour. Uh, uh, but I'll just say, if, if you come to me, I'll just say, just, just start there. And then once you get a hang of it, you can actually start getting to become more of an Alex. I would, would agree with you there, Gerald. I'd, I'd be frightened though, Alex would uh, automate me out of my job, I think, uh, for the sounds of it. But yeah, just to, you know, someone's asked specifically, like which bits of the funnel have you really used AI? Personally, for me, it's about that research stage that a big part of my role is selling into big pharmaceutical companies. It's very difficult to analyze drug pipelines, or it was. We've literally taken something that takes 10 hours into 20 minutes. And yeah, I agree with you, Gerald. Like ask chat GPT, you get a slightly wonky answer at times. Gemini is great. Um, and as you say, you can go and look at the links. Again, advice to people who are on the career accelerator who've never touched any of it before is, those tools are free. Go and have a look. See whether you can save yourself 20 minutes on something as a starting point. And yeah, no no journey is done all at once, is it? That's a first step. And then you can start to bring that in. Other you know, more practical stuff like product requirements, documents, testing scripts, it gets you off the blank page. It gets you to 80%. And in the startup where you're doing a lot of co-collaboration, that can be a great starting point to get people's ideas down on paper and get the ball rolling. Wonderful. Anything to add there, Lizzie, or will I keep going? As a non non technical PM, I guess um, I took all of our technical documentation and made a GPT and would ask questions. Um, so I didn't look so silly in front of the devs during stand up with my Kanban board because I really, I mean, it's something that otherwise would take me hours to go through all this documentation and then do that. And then I would also uh, use it to, in the beginning, to write my tickets, to write my JIRA tickets and to be very clear about acceptance criteria and, and aligning it with, with certain things. So to really try to, to get that correct. And then I would ask the devs, the humans, to please check and review and then feed that back in. So um, from a very practical standpoint, um, it's now been, I'm been a year now with Alan and Jill Gray Philanthropy. I mean, that saved me so much time in the first three to six months. I can't even express how helpful it was. 
here's a quick tip based on what Liz just said, and that is ask GPT to query itself, as in to check itself, question itself. So then you can even ask it to challenge itself. How many R's are in strawberry is a favorite of mine. <laughs> oh, there's so many stories, individual stories that we could dive into with our experiences on that. But I know I appreciate all of that. I'm conscious of time. I'm just going to wrap this firstly with an, a very brief overview of how the King's Product Management Career Accelerator enables people to achieve their intended outcomes. Obviously, it's a six-month um, online program, uh, part-time. It's around 15 hours a, a week with synchronous and asynchronous delivery. Um, Tom de delivers many of those synchronous sessions, and the rest is flexible or designed to fit in with you rather than you fit in with the university. It's made up of three courses and one live industry-facing project. So course one, product management and strategy, runs for six weeks with a week's break. Course two, product design and development. And course three, launching products to market. Your learning outcomes then, your practical learning outcomes, employers want practical, there's no exams. So instead you develop a portfolio of evidence through your submissions all throughout the program. And it culminates in a six week employer facing project with the likes of Sky and many of our other uh, employer partners. To frame that very quickly for the audience, yourself along with five or six other high caliber learners will meet with one of our employer partners. They'll present to you a product scenario or challenge relating to their organization and applying the learning from your first three courses and as a team, you'll come up with innovative and tangible solutions to that scenario, presenting your recommendations back to, if I could call them the client, in a consultancy style presentation at the end. That's invaluable in the practical application of learning in the real world. You're networking with your peers, but also leaders of industry. And lastly, when you are going for your dream PM role, we believe and have found with our learners, it's a much more powerful demonstration of your value to a prospective employer to relay a story of how you've worked on a real product related project with industry than it ever would be to recite an exam result. You're supported with the likes of Tom um, and others. And also our panelists also host the four expert led masterclasses in the AI learning track that ensures that the content that you digest and learn is possibly the most up to date globally. It is also a postgraduate certificate component to the program. So if you finish the career accelerator successfully, you can obtain your career outcome ideally and quickly, and then come back to do a capstone industry um, focused project with a dissertation that will award then a level seven qualification. The best thing that you can do from here is um, in the chat, there's some brilliant assets that Sam's put in there. There's brochures, there's a link to a webinar and there is a drop in with a brilliant enrollment advisor that's going to have a great deal of empathy around your individualized individual circumstances and advise as to the program's benefit or not. And that is uh, at 6.30, forgive me, Sam, I think it's tomorrow, 6.30 p.m. UK. Tomorrow you'll get some information surrounding that as well. Key takeaways on slide 15, Sam, as we wrap up and let's recap some of the steps. The rapid growth in product management field is increasing and demand for skills, skilled professionals with the skills of the Career Accelerator and an event such as this provides is ever growing. Success in PM requires that balance of some technical, but also those soft and those managerial, those data related and AI skills. AI is transforming the role of product managers, offering new capabilities, but also new responsibilities as well, which was so well articulated across many of the panelists. Um, standing out in your career requires continuous learning, networking, and strategic skill development. And the PM uh, Career Accelerator offers that pathway needed to excel in this evolving landscape. Um, lastly, a big thank you to everyone in, in the panel. Uh, it has been, for myself, really eye-opening to hear from GT, Tom, Alex, and Liz Elizabeth, or Liz, in the um, subject at hand. And I hope also that the audience feels just as enlightened as I do regarding your insights that you've provided. I've learned a great deal and I'm sure the audience has as well. If anyone does want to stick around for five minutes, I'm happy to do some more questions or overviews of the actual career accelerator. 
um, there will be a recording distributed to all of those that have registered and attended, and that should be uh, out in the next 24 to 48 hours. But from me to the hosts and to the audience, thank you for your time. Thank you for your time and expertise to the panellists. It's been a thorough uh, pleasure for me to host and learn from you all as well. Thank you kindly. <laughs>